Well, thank you very much. It's the end of a, a very wonderful occasion. And uh, just permit me a little bit more time to reflect on what we've heard and what we should take away home with us. But I must th th start by thanking our very wonderful host, the UAE government, His Highness the Crown Prince, the ministers, Minister Shanzi and Minister Al Hashmi. It's been wonderful um, with you and your teams. I want to reach out and thank the teams that worked on this, both from the government side and the Gavi side. We see them standing in the corridors, scurrying around. Without their work, we would not be able to be here, and sometimes we don't remember them. So could we give them a round of applause, please? I know nothing is perfect, and we've had our hitches, but I'm very proud of what the UAE team and the Gavi team have been able to accomplish to put this together. Thank you. I hope you'll all agree that this has been a most interesting and productive couple of days. I want to thank you in the audience for the staying power, the partners, the ambassadors who came, people who traveled all the way uh, to join us today, board members who are here. Thank you so much uh, for being, staying the course with us. Civil society that met on the sidelines and then came to give us their views. Thank you, we really appreciate you. As we had hoped, this midterm review has not been about Gavi reporting back, but rather it has been a constructive and at times quite dynamic conversation. Without you being part of it, without the leadership from the presidents who came, the prime ministers, the ministers, without Seth and Anurada taking a role in this, we couldn't have had the kind of dynamism that we had. So I hope you've enjoyed the conversation and you've learned something from it. I have. But what, 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 what have we learned? There has been so much to take in but I think it is evident about one thing. And I was looking for Zane, who led us to some of our conversations, I don't know if she's gone, to see if she could summarize for us what she has learned, because she's not a Gavi person. Anyway, I don't see her. So let me just hope that you've all come away with the impression that Gavi is delivering. But before I go more into that, let me step back a little bit and just reflect a bit on the proceedings and why we feel Gavi is delivering, not to keep you too long. This morning, His Excellency, the President of Niger, talked about how the support from the Alliance is helping his country to cope with bottlenecks and other challenges, including fragility. His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Mozambique, also talked about how Gavi is supporting his country to turn their political will into sustainable immunization programs. This afternoon, we heard from President Kikwete talking about the introduction of new vaccines, including HPV for girls. And this afternoon, we heard some inspirational voices from the field. To me, this was so dynamic. The young people from Malawi who told us how they got their vaccines, they are the young generation, and inspired us with their song and their commitment. Our nurse and community worker who delights in helping children at the, at the grassroots level, we saw her and her work, and she was here with us. And we also heard from our CSO colleague from BRAC talking about helping refugees from Myanmar. When I looked at the youth and what they were doing to promote our cause, I felt very encouraged. This is the Gavi generation. They're at 18, the same year, number of years that we are, and I feel there'll be a formidable force for positive and peaceful change. As Grasa Michelle once put it, preventing the conflicts of tomorrow means changing the mindsets of youth today. In Malawi, these remarkable young people are doing precisely that, challenging social norms, animating conversation, encouraging their peers, promoting what is good, and promoting gender equity through the energy of their music. 
Now, before I go on, I think it's worth dwelling on these positive aspects. Because we've heard a lot about challenges. The challenges since Berlin, the challenges to reach 2020, and the challenges we'll almost certainly face beyond. We should also acknowledge just how far we have come and what together, working together, we've been able to achieve. Today, millions of children are so much better off because of the work of the Alliance, hundreds of millions. And I know there is one statistic that I think before you leave here, you would have internalized it because we've said it so many times. But you have to internalize it. These 700 million children are vaccinated, 10 million lives saved. When you get to the airport, you're going to get a quiz on it. So I hope you remember it. You add to that $150 billion in terms of benefits that have been generated to our countries because of the work that this alliance has done. And when I say that we are better off, I don't mean just protected from infectious disease. Vaccination also protects families from poverty and the cut off so often catastrophic impacts of medical bills that can push those who have made it back into poverty. It protects economies. Of course, I have to say that, given my background, because parents of healthy children are able to go to work rather than tend to a sick child. And it protects the child fu child's future, enabling more children to go to school, get an education, pursue their ambitions, see the future, become the youth that we saw on stage today. Indeed, we're seeing this not just in the youth, but the economic, in the economic growth of countries and through the domestic financing of vaccination programs. So through all of this, I think this is how we're really empowering the next generation, giving them the strength to be the adult that they need to be. But we are not done yet, as I said, and we have a long way to go to ensure that no child is left behind. We've seen how difficult that is. We've done the easy part. And we've seen in the presentation Seth made how poverty is shifting. Poor people are no longer where they used to be. I want you to reflect on that. People are being displaced from their homes on a scale not seen since the Second World War driven by conflict, poverty, and climate change, as we just saw. And even where fragility is not the issue, where economies are growing and countries are beginning to prosper, we are still seeing some element of poverty persist. It's not just a case of being out of reach, nor one of distance or access. More and more, we are seeing vulnerable people, those who can still not afford to buy food, those in the lower income brackets, living not just in remote villages, but increasingly subsisting in the heart of cities. And as more and more of these people shift to countries in the middle income brackets, we need to reflect. We need to review this. We need to think about the implications this has on Gavi's work. So I'm not coming to any conclusions, but I think we need to think about what it means for us. We cannot just ignore this or ignore the people affected, because what affects one person directly affects all of us indirectly, as Martin Luther King said. In short, if we want to pursue and ensure global health security and avoid global economic instability, then we need to reflect how to approach the global issues as they are shifting constantly. Now, that will require a change in the way we think and we approach things. We may need to start thinking not of vulnerable regions, but of vulnerable people. I'm just rephrasing what Seth and Ola Roslin presented in the morning and in this afternoon. That's not usually the way we think, even for me. We usually classify ourselves into low-income countries, developing countries, upper-middle income. We don't think in terms of the people and where they are. So this is the kind of shift of mindset 
that we need for Gavi 5.0. The precise nature of the role that Gavi will play in 5.0 is one that we, remains to be seen as we live here. What I'm saying and what I've taken from listening to all of you is that there's no question of detracting from Gavi's commission. We must maintain that. Listening to all of you, it's also clear we must maintain Gavi's core model, getting countries to buy into their own immunization programs and contributing, transitioning countries out. That's what makes Gavi attractive, lowering the cost of vaccines to affordable numbers, front-loading resources so that we can save more children faster and earlier. All this is at the core of Gavi's model and its innovation. We have to maintain that. So finishing the job will remain the top priority and maintaining the Gavi model will be key. I want you to walk away with that reassurance. However, it's also clear that as the Alliance builds on these past successes, the knowledge, skills, tools, and innovation that Gavi brings with its core model, and the scale at which it's able to reach children, reach adolescents, it also puts Gavi in a good position to work with countries and partners, civil society, to help solve the emerging and new challenges. The challenge of sustainability, for instance, linked to transition. How do we think about that? And how can we use Gavi's positioning to solve that? I think in some ways, Gavi's move from 4.0 to 5.0 should maybe be approached in a similar way to the way we approached the MDGs and the SDGs. So we finished the job, because we certainly didn't finish with the MDGs. But with the SDGs, we started taking account of a changing global environment, of the universality of some of the problems. You know, MDGs were seen as being for developing countries. And then they were being monitored and measured. But with SDGs, and I was privileged to be on the panel, high-level panel that worked on the SDGs, we shifted away from that and said there are some universal problems that affect us all, and every country has to deliver. No country can talk about having gender equity. It's not about developed or developing. We all have problems. So it's the same kind of mindset. Shifting from 4.0 to 5.0 is shifting the way we view the world and the universality of our problems. And I'm convinced that Gavi has what it takes to deliver. That's what makes me excited to work with this organization. The use of innovation we saw is just one example. So as we leave here, and this is my concluding remark, we know that we are going to encounter new challenges in the coming years. We know that we are going to have to deal with old problems, but I also believe strongly that with the dynamism of this organization, we are very capable working together as partners to come up with the new solutions that will enable us to go forward. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you feel inspired. Every single one of us here is an ambassador for Gavi. So as you go out of here, remember, 700 million, 10 million lives saved. Thank you. <laughs>